Over the last couple of weeks, I've been shiny hunting. You know, these amazingly rare Pokemon that have a different color and sparkle when you see them. There's something special about these that makes everybody love them. So I decided to hunt an entire box full of them. And I did so by using almost every hunting method there is. From shiny egg hunts, to outbreaks, to exclusion hunting, I did it all. So join me on my shiny hunting journey as I traverse you through everything that happened. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Shiny Box. We start our journey on Poco Path just after you pick your starter Pokemon. You might already see where I'm going with this. So I wanted to start this hunt strong and decided to go with one of the starter Pokemon. The lighter blue version of everybody's favorite duck, Quaxly. I'm sorry Psyduck, even though you're light blue as well, this isn't about you. There was only one way I could get Quaxly and that's via egg hunting, which is something I've personally not done a lot because egg hunts tend to take long, but this little guy was worth it. After filling up box after box after box with little ducks, I was ready to sit here for a couple more days. But just 375 eggs later, my little buddy Alfredo hatched out of the egg. He's also not going to be leveled up or evolved because he has duties in a future run. The next box member is sleeping right now, so we better be quiet. But as we zoom in, we can see that it's a very cute, tiny little Noibat. I got this one after using a shiny sparkling sandwich in the North Providence area too. But this wasn't my initial hunt. I actually was hunting for something else that you'll see a little bit later in the video. But for now, let's set our eyes on this beautiful green little bat. I captured it in a netball because it works really well with its shiny colors. And even though little Maxi here might not be as strong, but once we evolved into arguably an even better shiny, Noivern, it turns into an absolute powerhouse. Noivern is one of my favorite Generation 6 Pokemon, so I'm really happy Maxi decided to join the Zwigo squad. Have any of you guys ever seen Lion King? Ah! Well, I'm glad to say that I have a special guest. The father of the main character, Simba, Mufasa, decided to join us. He has this majestic aura around him, with a mane that doesn't really change anything from its regular form, but its body turns into this very light yellow color, which I really like. And it makes his beautiful red eyes stand out even more. And the way that I found him was actually perfect. I was just running around, hatching eggs for Craxley, not really hunting anything, and it was just standing there menacingly. at the tip of a cliff, just like the one from The Lion King, with all of his little cubs beside him. I asked him to leave his family duties behind and join me on my quest of becoming the best shiny hunter out there. And I'm pretty lucky because he decided to join me on my next shiny hunting endeavors even though he's a little bit lazy sometimes. The next Pokemon will barely fit on your screen and looks a little bit like a Wishcash. Hence why I also gave him the name Wishcash. It's a beautiful, shiny Dondozo. I love how the shiny changes so drastically from its beautiful blue form to an even better looking white with yellow. He has threatened to eat me many, many times, but if there's one thing he loves more than eating, it's sleeping. And I was really, really lucky to get an outbreak of Dondozos because this was actually a Pokemon I really wanted from the start. But in order to hunt for him, you have to use a water type encounter sandwich and you can only find him in one area. And if you use that water type sandwich, it will spawn an abundance of Pokemon in that area that don't have anything to do with Dondozo. So being able to find an outbreak of the big fish himself was not only a sight to behold, as it turns out, a billion Dondozo spawning at once really screws up your game. It lagged so badly, I was so glad I finally got this guy and was able to get out of there as quickly as possible in order to get to the next shiny, which can mostly be found in the mountains of the Paldea region and can be mistaken for a machine part. But once you see a flash of gold zoom around, you know you've got yourself a beautiful shiny Varum. Once again a shiny I had already set my eyes on from the beginning. And when I opened up my map and spotted an outbreak of them, I immediately headed over there and started knocking each and every one of them out until 
still 60 of them were down. Because for you people that don't know, if you knock out 60 Pokemon in an outbreak, you'll have the maximized shiny odds. Then I had this really easy way of resetting. I would just go to this spot on this cliffside in order to despawn them all because I was loading in the town. And I'll just run back into the outbreak and all of them would have respawned, rinse and repeat that for about two hours and boom. I got myself a beautiful gold engine. I know I should have captured this one in a luxury ball, not in a quick ball, but I didn't have any of them on me, and the gold still kinda works with the yellow from the quick ball. But that's not where it ended. Nope, I had to evolve this beautiful thing into an even better looking rev of room. The gold and the purple oil stain just work so well together, so Luigi, my friend, I'm very glad I got you. The spaghetti. For our next one, we have to go back into the past to a rainy day somewhere in the olive fields. I had just used a grass type encounter boost to get something else that once again, we'll be able to see later. But once I got that Pokemon, I was in the mood for some olives and I don't like my olives green. I like them black. What do you mean by that? So you can imagine how stoked I was when I saw this little guy pop up all of a sudden. After snagging Mansana up in a dusk ball, I ate her. Just kidding, of course. That was close. But its shiny doesn't really change all that much, but I think it's perfect. I think going from a green to a black olive is really creative, and once you evolve it into Dolive, it looks even better. I want to say that Dolive is probably my favorite out of the three. He looks like he can nail a catwalk, and he's absolutely right, he would. But his evolution, Arbeliva, has a different set of skills. If you put him in a field of olive trees, you will have no idea which one is which. Uh, where'd he go? All that I know is that I love the subtle green change that it has from its regular form, as well as the difference in olives, of course. Shiny might not change all that much, but I think Mansana is an absolute beauty. What would happen if a town would all of a sudden lose its inhabitants? All of the plants will just die, and it will become a ghost town. And that's when you'll find Bramblin a beautiful little tumbleweed Pokemon. I think this is a very cool Pokemon design. I would have never in a million years expected there to be a tumbleweed Pokemon, but they really nailed it on this one. And because its shiny doesn't really change from its regular form, it only turns a little bit more white at the top, I was super lucky to spot this one because if you compare them to their regular form, just look, the difference is so minor. If you don't have an eagle eye, you're not going to be able to see it. I also managed to get this one like 5 minutes after Smollett, so that was pretty damn lucky too. So with 6 shooter by my side, I could only evolve him in one way possible, by walking around. And that's when something amazing happened. While I was doing the 1000 steps, I just randomly ran into this shiny sheep. Yup, yup. I, I don't know, it was just there saying hello to me. Hi, how are you? It was perfect. Even though Marip is probably one of the most common shinies, I still really love it because of its pink wool. It just works so well together with its cute little face. And after capturing it in a very compatible heel ball, I then promptly named it Wanda from Cosmo and Wanda. But before we take a look at Marip, we first need to do our 1000 steps with six shooter or should I say, standing on top of a Pokemon Center while he runs around in circles. You okay there, buddy? And I just have to say, Bramble Gas Shiny looks so much better than Bramblin's. The purple on top, together with the white wood, it really gives this ghostly vibe. And the two different set of eyes make it look even more goofy. And somehow, even cute. And if you ever had the thought, could a ball kick a ball? Well, here you go. It definitely can. Just like our next Pokemon, Mareep. Wanda here is, as I just said, super cute. Also super random, I still can't believe I got this while taking shots from my Bramblin. But hey, I'm super glad she decided to join the team. And I think she is too, so let's evolve her into a Fluffy who doesn't look quite that good. And honestly, isn't quite as cute either. But then, if you evolve Fluffy into Ampharos, it doesn't get much better. The blue crystal on its head, the pink body with the white and black, it all fits so well. I think shiny Ampharos might be top 10 generation 2 shinies, but honestly, it's nothing compared to our next two contenders. They are brother and sister, Sumo and Mika. I found both of these in the bamboo forest about a minute apart, which made them destined to be together forever. 
I think the entire shiny line of Ponyard, Bisharp, and King Ambit is top tier. Hence why I really wanted one from the start and I just had to go out, get that steel type encounter sandwich and search here. They aren't particularly hard to find because they're the only steel type that spawn here. They however are very aggressive. But both of them really do love each other but I decided to evolve Sumo because he's the best of the two. First into a Bisharp, which shocked Micah a little bit, but they still played together a lot. Then I had to go out and take Bisharp into battle. I had to find three King Bisharps, which basically just means a Bisharp that's surrounded by little Parnyards. Once you take three of those out, you can then evolve your Bisharp into one of the best new evolutions, King Ambit. I love that this guy is so vibrant with all the colors. The goldish arms and blade on his head combined with the red tips of his moustache and blue parts of his body make for probably the best generation 8 shiny combined with Karaidon, which I would have hunted for if it wasn't shiny locked. And he makes everything look cool. When in the sleep, Normal Pokemon are cute. No, this guy is straight up cool when he sleeps. Want him to kick a ball? He does the biggest samurai sweep attack you've ever seen. Yep, you can definitely say I'm very happy with this brother and sister. However, I still feel like they need another brother or sister to finish up the entire evolution line. So maybe in the next video, we'll work on that. But for now, let's head on over to the yellow team star base. If you look around a little bit, you can see a very sly and cool Pokemon sleeping. That's right. I got myself a shiny Lokix. The gold on his gun reminded me of the 007 series golden gun. So that's where he got his name Goldeneye from. And the spot where I found this golden secret agent was actually the same as where I found my Ponyards. But first, I was hunting Ponyard with a dark type sandwich. This made Lokix spawn too, and before I knew it, he was just standing there menacingly. Menacingly! Challenging me to even just try and capture him. He was so confident he could beat up my entire team that he even attacked me. As it turns out, he didn't know about the power of Dusk Balls yet. But speaking of golden Pokemon, this forest houses another Pokemon that's gold. One that has a very familiar cry to people that have played Generation 4 and goes by the name Dele Dele Whoop. Besides being notorious for its cry, I didn't really want a Krikatoon. I was actually hunting for either a Scyther or a Heracross with a Buck type sandwich because I was trying to double up here. But that didn't really work out as Krikatoon showed up first and was actually the only one that showed up with that sandwich. Still, I'm never going to complain about a shiny, definitely not one that looks as good as Krikatoon. So for now, he's singing me to sleep at night, but the next Pokemon definitely won't be doing that. He is, however, my favorite bug type of all time. Have you guessed who it is yet? If you guessed Heracross, you are absolutely 100% right. Aww. I even got a female one, which is even better because now it has its heart-shaped horn at the top, which makes it look even cuter. At first, I was looking in the bamboo forest for Rina here, but I decided to switch up my hunting location to the Sokora Trial instead. And I wasn't hunting with a Bug-type sandwich this time, because that would spawn other Pokemon again. I specifically wanted a Heracross, so I got my Fighting-type sandwich ready, Rina showed up. But I was panicked straight away because she was like, I'm just going to jump off this cliff right here and make sure you don't get me. Yeah, that's something I didn't want to happen, so I sprinted over there. And as it was flying there over the edge, I still managed to throw my ball at it and luckily engage a battle. But the battle itself didn't go as planned because I was fighting with my Colossal to try and maybe weaken it a little bit. As it turns out, my Colossal has the Flame Body ability. So after the Heracross hit me, it got burned and I couldn't really run away from this battle to heal it up anymore because I was afraid of it falling down the cliff. So I was on a timer. I had to capture this Heracross before it died from the burn damage. And after it got to really low health, I was starting to lose faith. I threw one last netball and saw the perfect catch animation. I knew Rina was mine. The best bug Pokemon was now mine, but I wasn't done with the bugs yet. I decided to go and bug one more, the second best bug. You might already know what it is. It is a Scyther. Or not Scyther, more its evolution, Scizor. This Scyther took me multiple hours to get, multiple sandwiches to get, but was absolutely worth it. If you use a flying type sandwich 
in the bamboo forest, it will be the only thing that spawns. Problem, however, it's really not that easy to spot because it only changes with the pink between its limbs. And it gets a little bit more dark green. With the lighting, a lot of the ciders look shiny but aren't, and because of the low rendering distance this game has, it's not as easy to spot one. Wait, is that one? Yes, finally I managed to find one, but at first it definitely wasn't easy to capture. It didn't want to stay in any of my balls, and I didn't want to capture it in a quick ball, so I decided on timer balls instead, to fit the color of the wings a little bit. Eventually he finally gave in, so Hookie is now ours. But in order to evolve Hooky, you have to give him a metal code and trade him over to somebody else. And there was only one person I trusted for this. And that's myself. I don't trust nobody with my shiny Pokemon, because they might do something funky with it, or maybe, you know, keep it forever. I decided to just trade with my other Switch. But boy, how good the shiny Scizor look in this game. The green metallic shiny looks so realistic and good. I feel like I could lick this thing and it would be the smoothest thing ever. Wait, what did I just say? All I'm trying to say is that Scizor is absolutely a 10 out of 10 shiny Pokemon. For my next hunt, we have to go back to the beginning of our journey. Once again, to the starter trio. This time, I decided to hunt probably the worst of the three starters. Sprigatito, the little cat. I think the eyes turning purple and the rest of the body turning into a different shade of green really works well together and it's just a very nice composition of colors. It also helps that this big set of purple new eyes really gives Sprigatito an even cuter look than before. Once again, there is only one way to hunt for a shiny Sprigatito and that's with egg hunts. So I once again pulled my Ditto out of my box and made him breed with a big cat. After only a mere 211 eggs and a couple of boxes filled up, I hatched my very own little Milo. Yes, this cat is named after my very own cat, which is also named Milo, so you could already imagine how happy I was seeing this cutie. He is super playful, but also loves to sleep like every single cat in the world, but I didn't want to keep him as a Sprigatito. So I quickly evolved it into Floragato. I love the new green tips on its head as well as the new green colors in general, but the little purple ball flower that it has on its neck now really finishes off the shiny very nicely. It might be a sly shady cat and can pounce anything that it wants, but once it evolves into Meowscarada, it just feels like it's not that cool anymore and in my opinion it's also the worst out of the shiny line. I'll get you and I'll look like a accident. The purple eyes just get a lot less noticeable. The green changes aren't enough for me to really love it. The only thing I really like is just the purple flower around its neck. But I'll always love watching Milo sleep. Are you ready to put on your winter jacket just like Russia? Because we're heading to the coldest mountain in the entire Paldea region to capture one of the cutest new Pokemon. He's a literal baby and turns from white to a very dark gray color. That's right, it's Setoddle. I absolutely love its little tooth and goofy mouth, and it's also super playful and clingy, which is what I love about this Pokemon. And the way that I got him is, uh, once again, I was just hatching some Quaxly eggs on top of the mountain, and all of a sudden he just transitioned in there. He really wanted to be with me because he even posed for the camera before I captured him. And after naming him the baby, I knew I had to evolve him into Titan because if you haven't seen Titan shiny yet, it's black, it's beautiful. We absolutely love to see this big boy. It's also a super heavy Pokemon, and also beware for its very dangerous mouth, as it might eat you. But besides all of those things, it's still really playful and loves to be your friend. So I can only recommend trying to get yourself one of these big guys too. Okay, you can take off your winter jacket now, and you should probably put on some shorts. Maybe even some climbing gear, because we're heading to South Providence Area 3, the home of the beautiful Pokemon Cloth, which is the one that was going to hunt next. I made myself a rock encounter sandwich, and started looking around the only place I knew where they would spawn frequently, which is where you encountered the normal Cloth Titan. However, instead of finding a beautiful shiny blue cloth, I instead found a duo of things that you can find in Super Mario World. 
ladies and gentlemen, meet Mario 1 and Mario 2. They were not easy to spot because the only thing that really changes is their color besides their shell. It turns a little bit more orangey. And while this change is really subtle, I do think this fits the Pokemon really, really well. Definitely when you evolve it into first Knacklesackle, who still loves playing with his little brother and goofing off, and then eventually into Garganackle, or should I say, the Great Pyramid of Giza. Mario 1's shiny colors don't only look amazing, he also reminds me of a pyramid from like one of the Mario levels, but also an Iron Golem from Minecraft. And there's no way Pokemon didn't take inspiration from those. But I still love this little goofball, and I definitely let him protect my village. Well, you just put away your winter jacket, right? Go and get it again. Because only a couple of hours later, I find myself another pink shiny. I just want to say that Generation 2 Shinies do seem to be pink quite a lot. Meet Jack the Sneasel. I managed to spot him in the left corner of my eye once I was once again hatching eggs, because I mean, you can't miss him if he spawns in a group of Sneasels. I know some people don't really like Sneasel's shiny because it changes too much from what its regular base form is, but I think that it's actually a good thing. I personally don't want Sneasel to have a different shiny, because this one's colors just fit so well together. The yellow and the pink makes for a very outstanding and unique shiny. That honestly only looks better when you evolve it into a Weavile. The crystal between its eyes turning yellow and being so vibrant, as well as its headpiece and just everything put together makes or one of the best shinies Generation 4 has introduced. And Jack here looks over to town to make sure everybody's safe. He's somewhat of a superhero himself. Damien that released Charmander from Pokemon Season 1. I hate you! I also like the thing that he comes out of the old Egyptian times because his crown reminds me a bit of those times. You know what doesn't have anything to do with Egypt though? Godzilla. And what's the Pokemon equivalent of Godzilla? I think we all know it, it's Tyranitar. That's not the one I was hunting though. It was its tiny little baby form, Larvitar. You see, I had seen a couple of videos on YouTube on peculiar shiny hunt locations. And as it turns out, if you go to East Providence Area 3 and head into a small cave there, step on top of a weird looking tile, this will make a ton of Larvitar just pop out of the wall, and if you use a rock-type encounter sandwich, they will spawn even more frequently and you'll have even more chance at a shiny. This is how I got my beautiful little, very dark green and pink shiny Benoit. I really do love shiny Larvitar's scholar scheme, but once he evolves into Pupitar, it gets even better. He goes to this very monotone, dark, purplish color. And while honestly they could have made Larvitar any color, I really think this fits the evolution line very well. But if you go into the next evolution Tyranitar, I don't think he looks as good. His shiny colors are pretty damn slimmed down from the other two, and while the purple stands out a lot, the rest of his body leaves a lot to be desired. However, it doesn't take away that he's probably the best Pokemon they've designed in Generation 2, and I absolutely love Benoit the Godzilla. In the same cave, however, I decided to use a Ghost-type sandwich, and the result for that was a tiny bit different. To say the least, as from that point onwards, little purple gremlin dudes started popping up. And while Sableye is a pretty cool Pokemon in its own right, its shiny is honestly breathtaking. There's a ton of shinies that look very expensive, but there is one that sticks out. And Sableye and its crystals do a good job at replicating that. The silver eyes flow really well with the gold body as well as the green crystal on the front. And for this boy, I knew I had to use my level ball because he just looks amazing in it. And after getting Glot the Sableye, I had to head over to one of the most dangerous areas the Paldea region has. It's also the area with the most emotional moments, very well composed music and just all around amazing feeling when you enter it. Yup, it's Area Zero. And the first Pokemon I wanted to start hunting for was Shiny Slitherwing. That's right, the past paradox form of Volcarona. But the first Pokemon I found when I wrapped up my Bug-type sandwich 
was nothing yellow really. It had more of a blue color. And blue in my book is always good. And just by this cliffside, I met Helmuth the Venomoth. And Venomoth is a pretty rare Pokemon in Generation 1. I remember finding them as a kid in the Safari Zone and being like, damn, this thing looks pretty cool. But upon further examination, Venomoth is not the best Pokemon competitive-wise. That isn't going to take away that Helmuth here has a absolutely stunning shiny form and can definitely kick a ball as well as a Pokemon with feet. But once again, Helmuth was not the reason I was here. Nope, I was still looking for that shiny Slither Wang. But my thirst would still not be quenched yet. First, I would head on over to a little pool of water, which inhabited a lot of ducks, and no, they were not Quaxleys or Psyducks. They were Golducks. A good example of a Generation 1 Pokemon with a pretty underwhelming shiny, but once again, a shiny is a shiny, I'm never going to complain about one. I will take Mr. Donald Duck here and add him to the box total. Then, finally, at the same cliffside I found Helmuth at, shiny Slitherwing would show up. I absolutely love her and it's probably my second favorite shiny paradox Pokemon. But before we get into my favorite shiny paradox Pokemon, let me show off the skills that Mana has. At first her name wasn't even going to be Mana, it was going to be Mona. But as it turns out, that's not a name you can give to a Pokemon. I don't know if it's like a slur in any kind of language, but Mana it is. This is the best I could find. She can fight. She, however, cannot fly. And that's what makes her so cute. When she stands upon her back legs, there's just no trainer that's going to beat this thing up. Nope, you're going to have to add her to the team. And that's what I did. Then once I got Mana, I knew I needed a couple more shinies from this place. I headed on down deep into the crater, ready to look for some more Paradox Pokemon. One more beautiful Paradox Pokemon I really wanted was Shiny Brood Bonnet. But there was another Pokemon I could encounter if I used a Dark-type sandwich. A Pokemon that also has a beautiful shiny, but is not from the same generation. He does however have two heads and is a pseudo-legendary, so after putting up my Dark Encounter sandwich, I eventually found myself a green-looking Zwilus named Marcus. It's a shiny that a lot of people have in Pokemon Go because of community days, but since I don't play Pokemon Go as much anymore, I didn't have one. and. I have to say, it feels so much better capturing shiny Pokemon in main series games compared to Pokemon Go. Hence why I was so happy when I finally saw Marcus shine, and eventually I even evolved him into High Dragon, an even better looking shiny, and in my opinion, my second favorite pseudo-legendary Pokemon just behind Metagross. If Metagross was available in this game, I would have hunted for it, but we're going to have to wait till maybe future DLC in order to get that shiny. For now, Marcus will definitely do. I know I was just talking about Brood Bonnet, but before I started working on that, I really wanted a Pokemon that deserved a new evolution and got it in Scarlet and Violet actually. It's Dunsparce, and everybody expected it to turn into some kind of dragon, but honestly, I'm very happy it turned into the Dunsparce, because you can't change perfection. Giving it an extra segment was just an alpha move from Game Freak, and giving it an even rarer form with three segments made me want to hunt for a shiny one even more. That's why I went for Dunsparce, I evolved it, and I was really hoping to get the three segment one for my first try, sadly enough, that's not what happened. Instead though, I got the majestic Trevor the Pink the Dunsparce that everybody seems to be very impartial about. I however used it on my first playthrough of the game and was not disappointed. Now let's finally get to Brood Bonnet. It has a beautiful blue looking Pokeball on its head instead of red. And every time I see one, it just reminds me of the episode of Spongebob where they go back in time with the time machine. I did however not use my dark type sandwich to get this because then I would once again encounter a Swilus. I used a grass type encounter which only made them spawn and that makes getting them a lot easier so after about 20 minutes I got my beautiful little fungus. I know he's a Pokemon that is mostly used for utility like putting Pokemon to sleep with Spore but I'll always be using him as my time machine back to that one Spongebob episode. The next three Pokemon were ones that I found once again with a very special shiny hunting method. I decided to use a method where Pokemon would spawn in very quickly just like the Sableye and Larvitar one. This time however, they spawned all on a rock. 
and if you would use a fighting type encounter sandwich, it would spawn in the first Paradox Pokemon that was ever revealed. So that's the boy I decided to hunt next. But I didn't go for level 3 shiny sandwiches, I was just going for fighting type encounter sandwiches level 2. So that meant that other Pokemon could still spawn. These other Pokemon consisted of Gibbles, Gabites, Screamtails, Garganacles, and Glimora. Honestly, I would have been happy with any of them except for Garganacle because I already have one of those, and the sandwiches decided not to disappoint. As only 20 minutes into my first sandwich, a shiny blue yellow land shark popped up. I know there's a lot of clubs around that really hate on shiny Garchomp. And to be completely honest with you, I am definitely one of those haters. It's one of the worst shinies ever. Of course, it's Mega kind of fixes that, but Mega Evolution seems to be a thing of the past and Pokemon isn't going to bring it back in the near future. So for now, beautiful pink shiny Garchomp is a thing of the past. However, Goober is not going to turn into a Garchomp ever. He's going to stay as its little beautiful Gibble form that it always deserved to be, and if they just carried over his shiny colors to Garchomp, he would look so much better. But no, they had to ruin him. So for now, I'll just enjoy spending some time with my thick little Gibble. Right after this Gibble, I was back at it for the Great Tusk Hunt, but he wouldn't show up yet. First, we'd get a Pokemon that in the Generation 1 anime was really good at singing and putting people to sleep. That's right, we did get another Paradox Pokemon, but this time it was a purple and red-eyed Jigglypuff, aka Screamtail. This was honestly not something I was looking for, but eventually I was going to get all of these shiny Paradox Pokemon anyway, so getting Area this early was definitely appreciated. While I haven't used her much before, I know she can be a menace to society, so let's keep her in the back of our minds for now. Back to the big elephants we go though. What I did notice, however, is that a lot of these elephants started glitching out and were just twitching all over the place. Another thing that gave me a couple of jump scares was a red light that shined on top of them and made them look a different color to what they regularly were. This gave me a ton of anxiety attacks being like, Oh damn, that's a shiny, but little did I know, it was just a regular Great Tusk with a red light on top of him. Eventually, after one more sandwich, a real shiny would pop up and I would find out that it's not red at all. It turns into this yellow-greenish color that looks a little bit like puke, but I still kind of like it for some reason. And I'm so glad I decided to hunt for this because I got two other shinies in the process and there was only one Pokemon I could name this big boy after and that's Manny from Ice Age. Now we have arrived to our last Pokemon on the list and it's my favorite shiny Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet except for Shiny Coridon, which once again isn't available. It is a Paradox Pokemon. It is a past Pokemon of a pseudo-legendary and it's only available in one single very peculiar area with signs on the floor that may or may not lead to an alien attack at some point. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Shiny Roaring Moon. This Pokemon is so strong, so cool. I don't think they could have done a past Telemans form any better. It also resembles its Mega form and it keeps most of its shiny color from its regular form, which is, by the way, also a great shiny. So I knew I had to have one of these. And while I may show him as the last Pokemon I got, this was actually the first shiny I got in this box challenge. I wanted one so badly that I needed him for the rest of my shiny journey. And I know a lot of people are having trouble finding this Pokemon because even if you use a Dark or Dragon type encounter sandwich, you're still going to find a lot of different Pokemon like Sneasel, Zwylus, Graveyard. But I was one of the lucky ones that got Shiny Roaring Moon on my very first phase. And I have named him Omega. I've used Omega here to defeat teams all across the region and just to make a mark to everybody that I'm not to be messed with. He was also the first Pokemon that I got fully competitively set up with a great nature and fully EV trained in attack and speed. So if I see this guy standing somewhere in a street, I'm definitely running away because I know things are about to get ugly. And that's where I'm going to end off this shiny box challenge. And while I did use the shiny charm and shiny encounter boost sandwiches, this still took me over 30 hours to complete. But all those 30 hours flew by like there were only 5. 
because I finally discovered the fun in shiny hunting. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this video because I would love to make more. But for now, I'm going to end off the video and cue the shiny Pokemon montage.